So you've been using your controller and getting better every day. But did you know there are hidden features that can make the experience even better? So you came to the right place. I'm going to show you. Residence classes in session. Dr. Jones is speaking. Let's surgery begin. So now you've learned how to read your screen from left to right, your input mode, the T for turbo, how to change your directional settings, your SOCD, you can see your button layout and you also turned on your input history. You learn what adapters you need to use your controller and you learn you can hold start, connect your controller to your computer, go to 192.168.7.1 and press enter. So now we're in the web configurator, I'm going to show you something you probably didn't know you could do. You can change most of the settings without coming to the web configurator. You can do it on your controller anywhere, anytime, any place. And if you have a dual pad or a guile keys pad, you've seen this system before. Both of those pads come with the menu button built into the controller that allows you to click them in and move up and down left to right to change your settings. The latest firmware comes with something very similar that will allow you to change your settings on the fly. We'll go to configuration, click pin mapping. We're going to go down. And where we see turbo, we're going to type function, click save. If you have more than one profile, make sure you delete turbo on all of your profiles and replace that with function and click save. So now we've changed our turbo button to function. We can actually make use of this button. We're going to go to settings. We're going to come down to hotkeys. Here you can see the default hotkeys that come with your controller. You can keep these or delete these. It is completely up to you. I never change my SOCD on my pads, so I'm going to delete these three settings. And if you ever need to change those, you can easily come to gamepad settings. It's right here on the top. and You can set that to whatever you want it to be. Most tournaments require a neutral. So why would you need to change the setting at all? When you come back to hotkeys, now you have extra slots to do whatever you want to do with your controller. So now I'm going to show you something. If you're running the latest firmware 0.7.11 or newer, you can change your settings on the fly. We can come to the top of our screen, change our view to GP2040 or PS4 or X input, whatever works for you. You're going to check function on the first option. So now when we hold our function button, which used to be our turbo and we press the home, the PS or a one button. When you go to actions, when you go to the very bottom, you'll see menu toggle, click this and click save. So now we have our toggle turned on. We can check six more boxes, set them to left, down, right, up. And I'm going to use L1 and L2 as those are the buttons on the outside of my controller. I'm going to set left to menu left, down to menu down, right to menu right, up to menu up. My select will be L1 and my back button will be L2. And make sure you hold turbo, which is the new function button. And below those, I can see my previous three buttons set and now I can click save. I can go to reboot, say controller. Now I have turned my turbo button into a function button. When I hold function, I press home. And when I look at my screen, now I can see the hidden menu system. When you're in the system, don't let go of turbo. Hold the turbo, which is now your function button. Use your directionals, left, right, down, up to move around this system. And the way I set mine up, the left bumper and left trigger, L1, L2, is how I select and back out of my selection. I could change my SOCD, I could change my profile, but what I use this for, when I plug into an Xbox or a PS5 or a PC at my local game night, I don't need to hold start and change the settings with a web configurator. I can do it on my controller right there on the fly. If I forget my profile swap button, I can come into this menu system and change my profiles on the fly. I click save and exit and my controller is ready to play. Now there is a setting in settings that can make this a little easier, but there is a catch. I'm going to show you how hold start in your controller. Go back to your web configurator, go to settings, come down to gamepad settings and right at the bottom. There's a checkbox. Use gamepad input for mini display menu. Turn this on and click save. Click reboot, say controller. Now hold the turbo, which is your function button, press home you will see the menu system appear. Let go of your turbo and your function button and just use your arrow keys to move up, down, left, right. And you're going to use button one and two, your AB buttons to select and back out. Now here's the catch. If your game is turned on, you'll notice it is moving through the menus on your controller and on your screen. 
So whatever you're pressing on this pad in this mode, it is pressing the same buttons on your console or your PC. Is this an issue? No. But I set mine up to hold turbo the whole time I'm in the menu system because I don't want to accidentally press something while I'm setting up my controller. And this is the two ways you can access the menu system and move around the menu system. So now let's customize our display. The first thing we're gonna do is turn off turbo. We're gonna to go to configuration. We're gonna to go to add-ons and you'll see turbo at the top of your list where it says enable, just turn that off. Go to the very bottom and click save. We're gonna to go to configuration. We're gonna to go to display configuration. Next, go to layout options. And now your controller is on, we can set what we want to see. The first thing is everything from the first video, the status bar layout. You have your input mode. Do you wanna know if you're in Xbox, PC, or PS5 mode? Turn this on. Turbo, do you want this on or off? I don't use turbo and I'm gonna show you a better use for that button, so I always turn off turbo. D-pad mode, are you in left stick, right stick, or D-pad mode? This is very important, turn this on. Your SOCD, I never change this, so I turn this off. Macro, I never use macros, I turn this off. Last is profile, I'm gonna show you how to use this, so turn this on. On the very bottom, where it says input history layout, turn this on and click save. Now something else I like to do, my button layout on my left and right, I like to see a ball top joystick, so I put the stick on the left and I put fight board on the right. Fight board allows me to see every button pressed and my menu buttons being pressed on my controller screen. And based on the vendor you purchase from, if you go all the way to the bottom, you will see board defined. And these are different options the vendors provided for you that they've made custom for their controllers. You may see one, you may see none, or you may see multiple. You can try those out if you're curious. We're gonna to go to the screen options tab and we're gonna turn on power management, turn off when suspended. What this will do is turn off your display when it's been sitting for too long without activity. If you walk away to eat or go watch a movie or just forget your controllers on all day, these are OLED screens and a lot of them are prone to burn in. So to prevent that, you can have the screen turn off by itself when you're not using the pad. So under mode options, I have multiple videos on how to make your own custom splash screen. Here is where you set that file. You'll choose the file. When you load it, you can click invert or unvert to change the color automatically. Next, you go to splash mode. Make sure this is enabled. You'll go to splash duration. And this is how long do you want your splash screen to appear when you plug in your controller. Mine is set to three seconds and I click save. We're gonna to go to display saver timeout. Right now it's either blank or zero. We're gonna set this to one. And what this will do is after one minute of sitting still, it will turn on a screensaver. And to your left, it says display saver mode. Here are your screensaver options. Pick snow and click save. And now if you forget to turn off your controller, the power saver mode will turn your display off. And if you're in between matches, your controller will go into a screensaver mode to save your display. And that's how easy it is to protect and change the look of your display. Congratulations, and always remember that you went into medicine to help others. Wait, this isn't medicine, this is fighting games. You brought this to beat people. Set it up the way you like it, have fun, and get some wins. Thanks for watching. Bye.